What is going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch. It's great to have you back. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Kickstarters are always a bit of a gamble. If you can't just burn that money, you really shouldn't invest it in a Kickstarter. Now, here's the thing. Kickstarter is supposed to be a platform for creators that have fully fleshed out products and that they just need money to bring that product to fruition. Now, of course, as it always is, the problem is when scammers get involved. As soon as scammers get involved and they start a Kickstarter on a product that they have no intention of actually making, that's a bit of a problem. And when people spend their hard-earned money on something that's a scam from Jump Street, well, that's just not cool. And since I've started making videos on Kickstarter projects, if I see something that I've covered before and I start to think maybe it's a scam, well, I feel like it's my responsibility to cover it. A few months ago, I covered the Cypher Pro, and since then, they've actually provided a ton of evidence that leads me to believe that this may not actually be a real product. This one's gonna be a bit of a wild ride, so buckle up and let's get at it. Now, first of all, I'm going to start off with a bit of a disclaimer. Everything in this video is my own personal opinion. I'm stating only things as fact that I know were facts. And for legal reasons, let's consider this entire video a bit of a parody or even a satire. All right, so with that out of the way, I want to reintroduce the Cyper Pro. I covered it a couple months ago in a video, and basically it's supposed to be the evolution of the Flipper Zero with uh, ESP32 for Wi-Fi. Now, this product has nothing to do with Flipper Zero, at least the official Flipper Zero stuff, but they're trying to hop into the same hype train that they were on. When I did my first video on Cypher Pro, there was a bunch of red flags already, such as they were trying to insist that you could use the Cypher Pro as a credit card, which we all know doesn't work. And furthermore, they actually showed them doing it, but you could see the credit card underneath the Cypher Pro itself. It was really sketchy. Now, that being said, I had a bunch of friends that had already invested in the Kickstarter. I even had friends that were mods in the Cypher Pro Discord. So I wanted to give them as much of the benefit of the doubt as possible because honestly, I wanted them to succeed and I didn't want my friends to get ripped off. At the end of that video, I recommended waiting before actually spending your money on Cypher Pro because maybe you get it for a couple bucks cheaper, maybe you get it a little bit earlier, but investing in stuff before it's an actual product is always risky. Mark, are you allergic to Cypher Pro? Stuff? No, I'm allergic to scams. <laughs> Especially when I pointed out that in their Discord, the guy, Seabass K, who is actually the CEO of the company, at least at the time, all this stuff is kind of questionable now, he was saying some really questionable stuff on the Discord. Things that the CEO of a company probably shouldn't say on a Discord. Well, after that, it was basically radio silence from those guys for literally weeks. And then shortly after, Sebask left and it was replaced by Root Cyberbot. Now, I kind of have a sneaking suspicion that Sebask and Root Cyberbot might be the same person, but hey, we'll get to that later. But at least Root Cyberbot was answering some questions, well, selectively, I guess, answering questions, only answering easy questions that basically they could Reflect, not answering questions from people who were being combative it was but it was something it was something but after a few more weeks of kind of deflection nothing really being posted on the kickstarter really radio silence from cypher pro their mods were starting to get fed up and really they were just looking for answers or information or literally anything from the guys over at cypher pro but still nothing after a couple more weeks cavitate one of their two community mods so the people that didn't actually work for cypher pro decided he had enough since he was a mod he had everyone perm so he pinged every Everybody, and basically handed in a letter of resignation, for lack of a better term, and was just going to clear his name of all of it. Now, honestly, I don't want to speak for Cavitate, but I actually have a screenshot exactly what he said, so I can let him speak for himself. All right, so here it goes. He says, my initial support in moderating this Discord was based on the fact that Cyber Pro Team had no experience running a Discord server and needed assistance. Now, this was absolutely true, especially in the beginning. They have no clue how to run a Discord server. Actually, moving forward, we'll see that's very much the case. For those of you who know me in other servers, you know that I love everything surrounding the tech industry. I was under the impression that Cyper Pro was going to be no different than some of the other servers a lot of us share in common. Now this is true, Cavitate is a well-respected individual amongst a lot of different communities, so I mean, I understand exactly where they're coming from. And now they say, however, I will not have my reputation tied to a company who fails to meet even the bare minimum when it comes to communication. I'm here with you, brother, like I'm doing this video for the exact 
same reason you wrote this. Moving on. In fact, the CyberPro team has been active in this Discord, making changes to permissions, hiding chat channels, and banning other members. Yet they do not take the time to communicate these changes or provide reasons why they're making these changes to the mods they have appointed, let alone updates on the progress of the project to the members who have paid money to it. Now, this has been the big deal when it comes down to everything with Cypher Pro is there's just no communication whatsoever, no reassurances. It's like they're their own island and nobody else is allowed on. And honestly, this is the reason why people started doubting them in the first place. The lack of transparency, the really weird directions they tend to go with things like spending all their time and money on metal cases or whatever. Like this does not sound like somebody who's got a fully fleshed out, fully figured out product. It's going to be released in what, like a few months? So of course, Cavitate did anything any self-respecting person would do, and kind of cut and ran. As he says, from this point forward, I am removing myself from anything to do with the project. I cannot and will not recommend this device or lack thereof to anybody based off of how this company has conducted themselves so far. So yeah, I mean, that's completely, completely reasonable. Basically, hey, you guys aren't being transparent. You guys aren't communicating and I'm not going to let you represent me because I'm attached to you guys as a mod. Remember how I said that Cavitate was a mod and had everyone perms and since he tagged everyone in the video, guess who showed up? everyone, including me. Now I got to watch this whole thing unfold, but unfortunately I don't have logs for any of this, but again, we'll get into that a little bit later and you'll know why. But you know what I do have is this segue to today's sponsor, PCBWay. Now there are a ton of us that don't want to scam people and PCBWay is one of them. All PCBWay wants to do is pretty much make your projects a reality in the easiest, fastest, best way possible. They want to help you take your project and make it a reality. How are they going to do that? Well, easy. They can help you design and create PCBs. They can even assemble them for you. So you just order them and they come into your door ready to go. Now that you have your PCB design and printed, they can help you even more because they can 3D print a case for it or anything else you might need. Don't forget the module store too. They've got so much cool stuff in there and new things show up all the time. So thank you so much PCB way for your continued support. Let's get back at it. So yeah, Cavitate pings everyone. Everyone shows up. So guess what happens? Chaos. No, oh, there's no justice like angry mob justice. I'm going to burn all the historic memorabilia. Now, this isn't just chaos for chaos's sake. Literally, since Cavitate said he was leaving and then the root cyberbot actually showed up and started talking to people, everybody had questions. Now, remember earlier when I said I had a sneaking suspicion that root cyberbot was Sebastian from earlier? Well, this is why. Well, remember those kind of questionable messages that I said were coming up in the discord from Sebastian? Well, they started happening happening again amidst all of the chaos of people asking questions and being quite frankly kind of upset and kind of like give me my money back there was some inappropriate jokes made then and they were not really great now since i don't have logs about them i'm not going to try to recreate or explain them but it pissed people off and then poof Channel by channel, line by line, chat by chat, everything disappeared. You could watch it happening on Discord. Channel's gone, channel's gone, channel's gone. The history's gone, permission's gone, just gone. Good old Falco, can you see anything? Anything at all? No, all the land is gone. It also sounds like there were some mass bans going on. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure exactly what happened, but yeah, everything was gone. And then, radio silence until a kickstarter update i'll read this for you too the last hour has brought unexpected events cavitate and bill and i uses my wi-fi have conducted a raid on the discord server steps will be taken within the next 24 hours to restore normal operation a link to the new server will be provided in our website and on social media now they immediately threw their mods directly under the bus and blamed them for the entire thing now i know bill and i uses my wi-fi personally he's a good friend of mine and i promise you I know for a fact he had absolutely nothing to do with this. So, you know, dragging his name through the mud like this is also part of the reason why I wanted to address this in the video. I also want to point out this wasn't a raid. Like everybody was already in the server and had been asking very similar questions the entire time. Honestly, the only difference was that the bot was active in answering questions. So again, more and more people were asking questions. Now, I also want to point out, and it's still like this, as soon as the raid happened, everything got pulled off the Cyber Pro store. Here, let's hop on down to the desktop and I'll show you what it looks like. So yeah, here is the Cyper.pro website. And if we click over here on pre-order now, we'll notice 
they don't have anything anymore. They even pulled the icons off, which is really weird. So transparent, out of stock. Cyberflow blue, out of stock. Black, out of stock. Let's buy a t-shirt, out of stock. Um, prototype boards? Out of stock. Oh, it said buy now, but now it's out of stock. Limited edition? Out of stock. It is completely a barren wasteland. They nuked the whole thing. Now, if that's not really weird timing, I don't know what is. Shortly thereafter, they released a message on their Discord again under, I believe it was in a channel called Raid, basically saying, uh, Discord server raid within 24 hours, everything will be restored. Banned people will become unbanned. Now, this is when things go from kind of sketchy to just downright bad. Now, if you remember when I said earlier that the Cypher Pro guys really had no idea how to run a Discord, that still applies. Now it's been speculated, yet I've got no proof of it, that they actually went out, the guys from CyberPro that is, they went out and hired somebody from Fiverr to rebuild their Discord. Now I'm not exactly going to say how we came to that conclusion, however, looking at the Discord after it was created, I hope they didn't spend a lot of money. So yeah, Discord gets reopened, people show up again, but we start to realize that maybe the person setting this up really didn't know what they were doing. The first thing that we all realized is that the permissions weren't set up particularly well. Particularly any member could use the everyone ping. Now, when you get a bunch of people who kind of think that this whole thing's a scam and then you give them ability to ping everyone on the server, well, guess what happened? Chaos ensued again. Remember your exit points, exit Oscar. points. Um, stay alive, I'm getting help. Pull me up, you're too heavy. Ah. But this time, there were no mods there. There was nobody from Cypher Pro there. No one answering questions. No one. Not even the admin that was building the whole Discord again, because we could see him doing it. Like, we could see channels moving around, we could see him moving in the background, but not a word. Also, since they realized that they royally screwed up the permissions, they started changing permissions on everything, basically making it so that no one had permissions to do virtually anything. And that's where we are now. Honestly, if you go into the Cypher Discord, which we're gonna do in a second, it is a ghost town. However, there's a few places where things still, I don't know, I'm not sure why they set things up the way they did, but it's actually pretty interesting. So let's Let's hop on down and take a look. So yeah, this is the Cypher Pro Discord as it sits now. Notice you'll see that you do not have permission to view the message history of general. So right now I can see somebody posted something because I've had Discord open. If I close Discord, all these things are wiped and I can't see any of it. Now that's the same for a lot of the channels. You'll notice Cypher Talk, Feedback's got some people in there. I think we would like general chat to be reopened. Yes, I agree. I mean, this is basically it. Pretty much everything is empty. There's nothing here. Also notice they have 11 bots. They have a lot of bots on here. It's actually pretty questionable. I'm not sure why they have so many, especially so many bots with admin permissions. That's ah, a little sketchy. Now there there are some channels that actually are active. Like, well, some of these have some questionable things in there. Uh, I'm not gonna click a spoiler for it, but there's definitely some things going on in some of the channels. Specifically, where were we? Was it memes? Off topic. Hey, that's what I was looking for, off topic. But yeah, you can see there's all of these people in here speculating because this is literally the only place that you can actually type in here. And this is the only place that you have, you know, the ability to view message history. So that's effectively where Cypher Pro is right now. Now, another thing that happened was what the Discord was recreated. Originally, they only had a few emojis in here. Well, they added some more and they are extremely questionable. So if we look through some of there, we can see some extremely problematic emojis. I don't need to explain which ones are problematic. I'm pretty sure you can figure that out for yourself. But I mean, this should not be on here, period. Now I have personally pinged Sebastian as well as a ton of other people asking questions, especially about why are these emojis in here? You guys know about it. You guys can change it, but nothing. They're totally gone. Just poof, no more. Now, I know a ton of people have gone and reported things to Kickstarter to try to, you know, do something about this. Now, again, this is all my opinion. A lot of it's speculation, but it really doesn't look like this is going well. Now, I honestly do hope they get their act together and create this thing for the good of the entire community and all those people invested money in them. The problem is without transparency, communication, any of that stuff, I 
don't think that's gonna happen. And it sucks. I hate to think that any of you guys wasted your money because you saw me cover it in a video. And if that's the case with you, I'm honestly sorry about that. I just found a cool product on Kickstarter and kind of wanted to talk about it. And again, at the end of the video, I kind of said, hold off, don't buy it, make sure it's real first. And since then I've made other Kickstarter videos. When I covered the Monster Tech M1, I actually specifically made sure that the video dropped after the Kickstarter was over because just in case it did turn out to be vaporware, I didn't want you guys to waste your money on it. So yeah, that's from what I can tell the current state of the Cyber Pro. Is it ever gonna ship? Who knows? I guess at the end of the day, I'm just hoping that this video helps people understand the risks that are actually involved in Kickstarters. I say it over and over again, if you can't afford to literally light that money on fire, don't put it into a Kickstarter. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. It helps me a ton. You guys are absolute legends. We'll catch you next time.